What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're liking these videos that you've been seeing on my YouTube channel, then please help us out. Give us a thumbs up and comment below for the algorithm. Helps us out and also gets me to interact with you. I'd love to hear what you're thinking as you watch this video and you hear this breakdown of training that happened back on December 20th. Trying a new format today, reviewing what we did talking about the group that was there, the workout that we did, the intentionality behind each piece of training, and then hopefully just giving you some insight into what was going through my head as I went through the workout and what I was seeing amongst the other athletes in the room. So here we go. This was on December 20th of 2022. So here we are in January and we got some footage from a workout that we did. We started out with a hot start. The hot start that we did was designed to kind of wake up the nervous system and get our hips mobile for squatting. So you saw us each on a cardio machine performing like 15 to 30 second high effort sprints. That was gonna wake our, our brains up, get the blood moving. And then we were doing Cossack squats assisted holding on to something and duck walks. Those are two great movements for opening up the knees, hips, ankles, getting you deep into that squat position, exploring different angles in your hips, which is gonna be important when you're squatting and when we're doing cleans here shortly. So there are two strength elements that we focused on today, um, the front squat and then the clean and jerk, which is gonna be coming soon. The front squat prescription was really to just build up to a heavy set of five, for each person. And I wanted this to be time dependent. So it's like, I, I kind of made the announcement, hey everyone, you got 10 minutes from start to finish with an empty barbell to work up to a heavy set of five. Five reps is really a good number between like two and five reps. That's a great number for developing absolute strength, top end strength and training your nervous system. You know, you can get a bit of muscle building hypertrophy benefit from a five rep a five repetition rep scheme, but this is really a bit more focused on building strength than building muscle mass. And that's why I also put a time limit on it because I didn't want all of us to be grinding out heavy sets of five and five and five in the front squat and just tiring us out because there was a lot more work to come. So each person is building up to their heavy set of five at their own pace, taking about 90 seconds to two minutes between sets, longer rest, once we're getting to those heavier sets. One thing I like to do when building up to a tough set of five is I like to keep the final set in mind. The final set is what we're aiming for. We want that tough set of five. So your warm up sets don't necessarily have to be sets of five while you're working your way up. You can see the belts coming out, which means that Brie is probably getting up to one of her top sets of the day. Here's coach Shauna, another one of our FBB master coaches who's definitely got the belt on. So she's probably going for a top set. And that's just something to think about too, or talk about is that you know, where do belts fit into training? And we typically don't do a lot of belted lifting in our gym because we're not training at top, top end um, in a lot of functional bodybuilding workouts. But certainly when you're going for sets that are above 90%, you know, effort or 95% effort, having a little bit of extra support from a belt is not a bad idea. Okay, this is definitely my top set of the day. I think this is 275. I was trying to get to this for five reps today and I really have to focus on my breathing and bracing when I do front squats. Just the way the bar sits on my shoulders and against my neck, I can get really lightheaded when I front squat if I'm not thinking about how I'm positioning my elbows, my rack position, and bracing with my breathing. So oh, just grinding out that fifth rep there. I was super happy to get 275. That was kind of the goal weight I had in mind for the day. And there's my belt loosening that up. And now we're working on an Olympic lift. And an Olympic lift is definitely something that's gonna require speed, it's gonna require power, it's gonna require coordination. So even though we did those front squats, we're still working, you know, not under a ton of fatigue while we're doing these uh, Olympic lifts. So the goal was not to necessarily build up to like a max weight or anything. We were just doing doubles. So a full clean and a jerk followed by another full clean and a jerk. 
And again, I put a 12 minute cap on this, just slowly build up to something that you could execute with good form and good technique. I didn't want to see any breakdown in form. And so that really isn't getting you know too close to maximum for anybody. Um, my sets did get a little bit heavy. I think I hit 245 or 255 for my top set, but I had done this um, again with like uh, the intention of stopping before my form started to break down dramatically. And now Megan hasn't done split jerks probably in two years prior to this. And so she was learning, kind of relearning a little bit of footwork. Her cleans were actually pretty solid. And since this video is filmed, we've probably done two sessions of jerks and every week they've gotten better and better and better. So it just goes to show that if you don't touch a movement for a long period of time, you'll definitely feel rusty coming in. And that's true for the Olympic lifts. And it can even be true for slow lifts like front squats or deadlifts, like something just feels off. But if it's something you're really eager to try and bring back into your training and actually get that technique and that comfort back, just putting it in your training week after week, having consistency uh, is going to make a huge difference. That's something that, you know, I hear a lot in the functional fitness community. It's like, man, I, my, this lift feels off, or I haven't seen that lift in a while. And when am I going to see that lift again? Being able to see a lift or any exercise week after week after week is really beneficial for a number of reasons, but specifically for the reason of just learning the movement, refining the technique, getting your motor control all put together so that each week it's like muscle memory is there and you're not having to like relearn what you're doing on a consistent basis. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to sort of the second big phase of training. So we did our absolute strength, and now we're getting into what I call the strength balance work of functional bodybuilding. This is where we're kind of change up our rep scheme. We're working in higher rep ranges, uh, muscle building rep ranges, uh, rep ranges where we can control movements a lot better, meaning like really focus on great technique, really focus on every inch of the full range of motion, if I change the movement, change the rep range, change the tempo, change the position, I have more control over doing that. So strength balance is really dedicated to that, uh, that approach to strength training and muscle building. So the reps were in the 15 rep range, trying to get people to hit 15 reps per side. So I told everybody in the room, I said, we're going to work quads and we're going to work hamstrings. We're going to work quads with something called a knee over toe split squat or an ATG split squat. And we're going to work hamstrings with a Nordic curl. That's what you're seeing Shauna do right now. Or a hamstring curl machine, which we happen to have at the gym. They both isolate the joint, the knee joint and knee flexion um, in different ways. They're not the same exercise, but they certainly can replace one another if you have one option or the other, if you prefer one or the other. Now for this split squat variation, the two coaching points that I gave everybody were to keep your back leg as straight as possible and keep it off of the, the floor. A straight back leg as you're performing this is going to really exaggerate the hip flexor stretch of the back leg. So I'm telling Shauna to keep that knee off the ground. And then the second cue is really driving that knee as far forward as possible. In this case, I would actually coach her to get her knee further forward than what she was doing. But the combination of knee way over the toe with heel down, and back leg straight, knee off the ground, that's going to really work ankle, knee, and hip flexor range of motion, which is really powerful for developing a good mobile lower body and training the quads, the quad strength a lot. So this particular type of split squat really targets the VMO, which is the teardrop muscle right around the knee and it is great for knee strength, flexibility, ankle strength and flexibility, and then hip flexor flexibility and strength. And here we go. We're getting into our final piece of the training 
So strength balance is behind us. And then it was an EMOM for conditioning. Now this EMOM had three stations to it. The first station is what you're seeing Bree and I do right now. That had one power clean, three deadlifts, and five bar facing burpees. The second station is what you're seeing Megs and I do. It was a 30 second tuck L hang. Actually, I think it was 30 to 40 seconds or 20 to 40 seconds. Whatever was challenging for you that you could replicate every single round that we did this. And then the final station, eight box jump overs directly into double unders, 20 to 30 reps of double unders. So in an EMOM like this, this format, you have to complete all the work within a given minute, and then you get to rest for the remainder of the minute until the next minute comes up, you start the next station. Ideally, as I'm programming these, my goal is to kind of set rep targets that get you about 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest, or 35 seconds of work, 25 seconds of rest. About a one-to-one -one ratio of work to rest so that you can remain in a sustainable state the entire workout. We did 15, maybe 18 minutes of this. I believe it was 15 minutes. So five rounds, each station got three. So each of the three stations got five sets each for a total of 15 minutes. The way I like to think about that is if you truly do this EMOM in a sustainable format where you're getting about a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio and you can recover in that time, everybody in this room, if, if at the end of 15 minutes I said, hey, we're going for two more rounds, they might not have been happy about it. They might have been a little frustrated that like, hey, coach, why did you just spring this on us? But they would have been able to do it. At the end of 15 minutes, if it's a 15-minute EMOM, you should not be tapping out and saying, there's no way I could have finished this. So oftentimes when I'm writing these workouts, I might be giving rep ranges. I might be giving time domain ranges. I might be saying, you know, for the weighted movement in this case, it was power clean and deadlift. Might be giving a, a broad range of weights that you could use. The goal is to find what works for you to complete the amount of work on the prescribed minute and have enough time to rest and feel like you can repeat the process over and over again. So this is a persist perform workout. That's the style of our persist training program where we bias a little bit more towards performance, top end strength, conditioning, but we still put in those strength balance efforts, that hypertrophy training so that we can look good and move well and develop great movement patterns and performance strength and cardiovascular abilities. I hope you like what you saw today. I hope some of the topics that I talked about in this breakdown help you to make better decisions in your training or approach things with the right mentality. The more you know about what you're doing, the better you're going to get results out of your training. If you've got questions for me, please drop them in the comment section below and I will see you next time. Thank you.